At least 28 people have been killed when two boats capsized off Djibouti. The boats were carrying at least 130 migrants and refugees when they tipped over shortly after departing. Many of the migrants are still missing. Thousands from East Africa often attempt to cross the Red Sea to find work in Gulf countries. The United Nations is warning refugees and migrants crossing the Mediterranean Sea are losing their lives at an alarming rate. New figures released by the UN's refugee agency show six people died on average every day last year. Well, it estimates more than 2,200 migrants died or went missing while attempting the crossing. The route was particularly deadly for boats leaving from Libya, where one person died at sea for every 14 who arrived in Europe. That's despite a major drop in the number of refugees reaching Europe. 139,000 arrived in 2018. That's the lowest number in five years. For more on this, let's speak to Charlie Yaxley in Geneva. He's a spokesman for the UN Refugee Agency. Good to have you with us. So from those numbers there, it looks like the journey to cross the Mediterranean became a lot more dangerous or deadly in 2018. Is that the case? Well, what our report today shows is that the number of people arriving on European shores by Mediterranean routes uh, is down substantially compared to previous years. We're back now to levels that we were typically seeing um, throughout the early 2000s. But what is deeply concerning is that for the fifth year in a row, more than 2,000 people lost their lives. And this is happening particularly on the central Mediterranean, where on the route from Libya to Europe, uh, a combination of smugglers and traffickers attempting ever more dangerous journeys. Right, uh, uh, just to, sorry to jump in, but to extrapolate from that, search if, and rescue if, capacity. The, if the number of people arriving in Europe are going down, but you've got the same number of deaths, does that mean more people uh, as a percentage are dying? Or does that just mean that we don't know how many more people are making the journey? We're only looking at how many people actually arrive in Europe because a lot of countries have cut down on their SNR operations. Well, the arrival figures we're, we're sure about because the, the passengers there, they're disembarked and upon arrival in Europe, they're immediately registered. Uh, there are asylum claims documented for those seeking protection and uh, for the others as well. Uh, for the deaths figure, that is likely a conservative estimate. This figure of more than 2,000 dead could in fact be far higher. These are only the ones we know about. Um, and there remains a lack of NGOs uh, operating search and rescue operations because of restrictions that have been imposed on them by states. Uh, and we're seeing the deadly consequences of that now. We've seen authorities starting to deny disembarkation rights to uh, ships carrying refugees and migrants. What sort of impact has that policy had? Well, this is another phenomenon that we really started to see emerge last year, particularly in the, in the latter half of the year, uh, where boats with rescued refugees are left stranded at sea for days on end. And uh, many of these people are in need of humanitarian assistance, uh, many of these people are in need of international protection uh, and this is having a deterrent effect uh, on, on boats who may uh, wish to conduct search and rescue operations. One of the things you know, UNHCR is really concerned about is that if this situation continues, we may have vessels, particularly commercial ships, uh, waver or even ignore uh, distress signals for fear of being stranded at sea for days on end. And then another thing which has happened is we've got this policy now of detaining people uh, increasingly in Libya. What sort of conditions? We need to talk about the conditions that people are being held in, right? This is, this is, not an, this is far from being an ideal situation in which to detain and process people's applications, for example. Well, UNHCR has repeatedly called... Uh, for no rescued refugees and migrants to be returned to Libya uh, in its current context. What we're seeing in Libya is an incredibly volatile security situation. Just a couple of weeks ago, fighting once again broke out in, in Tripoli. Um, refugees and migrants, once they're returned to Libya, they're routinely held in appalling conditions in detention centres where they suffer from lack of food, lack of access to adequate health care, 
uh, and a range of human rights abuses that have been reported. Uh, and at this current situation, we're calling for a regional approach for, rescue, for rescued refugees and migrants. They should be taken to the nearest port of safety. In its current context, Libya has no ports of safety that are suitable. All right. Thank you very much for your analysis of the situation there. Charlie Axley.